chat. Hey, cool. Pop out the chat. Over here, cool. And then last missing piece here. What's up world edit? y'all are doing all right today as we're going to whip up a little little skeleton boy today shouldn't be too crazy relatively shorter episode just because he's only so intricate right we'll, we'll do some free hand or something we'll do some stripes on the pants or something like that and then i do have look see we got look at that there's what there's there's the miniature for february you see it right there that's cool right you guys like it? Is it a good paint job? Here, look, I'll make it easier to see. Do you like that? Here, we'll, we'll there, now it's in focus so you guys can see it. You like that? Is it cool? What about this one? Here, we'll do another, we'll do another one. You like that one? Look at that, isn't this one cool? Here, we'll do the focus trick. There you go. Put it back. <laughs> What about that? Now, you'll be able to know what this one is, so I'll do it this way. There we go. Here's another February mini. I'll have that um, image out to you guys tonight. And I will show you some of these. The only thing they're missing are... Uh, well, one has no room for anything on the base, but then the other two I need to put some, some seashells. If I know where that is, yep, I see the bag behind me. And then uh, I need to put some grass tufts on the other one, so. But, hope you guys are having a good day. You had a decent weekend. I see everybody slowly piling in here. I'm trying to think, I know, I'm sure you saw the Mando bust that I finished up. We did get that painted. That was fun. Over the weekend on Patreon, we did uh, the Winter Wolf. So we did this fur class. And what's fun about this miniature too, right? So like this is one of the rare um, kind of like animal sculpts that actually is covered in sculpted fur. So like nearly every single part of this miniature has fur texture. And then the way that we painted it was nothing but brush, like individual brush strokes for all the hair. So I think it turned out really cool. Definitely uh, like not your standard. I mean, it's very realistic. I forget the, um, I forget the, the type of wolf we looked up, but I, I looked up like an actual wolf pattern to copy. So, but I've seen some people on the Patreon already upload uh, their paint jobs and they look great. So I'm really glad that people have been able to kind of refine, you know, this is this is for our like a more advanced, advanced class. And this paint job I think was like in an hour and 40 minutes or something too. So it was, it was really fast. Um, but this is for the $10 tier in case you're interested in doing the class itself but we always do like more advanced stuff um for the second class of the month so we had a lot of fun with that i think i think it turned out really well i have no idea what we're doing um for next month but we haven't we have a weekend in between this is a, a five a five weekend month um but i can check i know that let me see i know february had some cool stuff planned so let me let me click here and figure out what we're going to be working on all right, so it looks like February is, oh, cool. So we're doing red and black Friend of Jack. So we're painting the giant snake to look like a coral snake. So that'll be cool, right? Um, nothing too insane. And then we're doing freehand gems and cloth on the Tangu Wizard on February 27th. So we're gonna do something really cool um, with the robes and the gems on that sculpt as well. Uh, March looks like a cold palette with the, with Hanai female warrior, whatever that is. I think she's like, uh, she may be a newer sculpt if I'm remembering correctly. And then on March 27th, we're doing color theory, Captain Black and Odo, which are uh, ReaperCon sculpts. So that'll be pretty fun. 
April looks cool. Oh, April's actually really, really fun. Uh, we're doing Mutant Skin and Advanced Cloth. May, we're doing OSL Basics. So we're doing another Object Source Lighting class and uh, Warm Palette. And then that's it. We always, we always plan everything six months ahead of time. Um, so if you do join the Patreon, right, you know exactly what's coming up in the future, anything you need to purchase for that, and you can handle it that way. Um, and then now, uh, we're probably going to be doing more 3D printed stuff, scaled up stuff, things like that, um, just to kind of be able to make it easier for some people. People have been really enjoying the fact that they can order uh, scaled up stuff um, for like the Atelier tier, things like that. But, all right, do you guys want uh, to start things off? Before we really get started, let's see how many people got in here. All right, we got people trickling in. I usually wait until we get like 40, but we can always start. Um, but what do you, do you guys want to see? All right, so from February, would you like to see a someone lucky or someone spooky? And I'll let you guys in the chat let me know, and I'll and I'll show you. We your options are lucky or spooky. Spooky, says Fido. Move my phone over here. What am I looking at? <laughs> Amazon delivers so much resin at the house. Okay. Spooky. Are you guys excited? Here, you guys can see this, right? And he doesn't need to be in focus. Looks cool, huh? What? Whoa. 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 So we're just missing some grass stuff on the base here. But definitely looking forward to painting this guy. I mean, look at the armor, right? So what I what I tried to do for February's um, Miniature Monday stuff, other than getting to paint something big like this, which is always fun, um, and our metal mini is really cool too. Our metal mini is a uh, chronoscope, which is fun. But so I've, I've focused in at least on two of these in heavily tinting uh, metallics. So this is uh, purple, two different shades of purple. And then we have OSL coming out of the skull head, everything else like that on the throne, really fun. Um, and then the other one is like super brilliant gold. So um, definitely some good practice in there. And then I'll show off um, the other one that I was going to show anyway, and uh, he's just a good time. I think I think everybody's going to be uh, pretty pretty happy. I think every single month is going to be fun. So, all right, so we can get started on this bad boy today. Let's go ahead and begin on the uh, bonesy wonesy. So, let me pull this back up so I'm not lost. I always end up closing things that I don't need. I am clearancing um, all of my extra Reaper minis that I was gonna use for um, different kits. So if you guys were interested in that, I still have some available on the website. It's totally random what I have uh, for sale, but it's all 50% off um, the MSRP. And then I had to, they're all metal. I've like 99.9% .9 of all the minis are metal. So I normally offer free shipping uh, for orders over 60 bucks, um, but I had to bump that to a hundred because <laughs> based on some of these orders, the shipping literally like, it'll be a $15 flat rate box, right? So I can't really, I don't want to cut into <laughs> my side of it that much, unfortunately. I don't have a, I don't have a cool shipping account or anything like that. So we're going to start with polished leather. I'm going to get some white on the palette and a little bit of black. But definitely check it out. Are you gonna do any mini Monday episodes on the Reaper? I don't even know anything about Reaper Virtual. I don't know what the miniatures look like. Uh, I, it's not even going on on Monday, is it? I think it's just the weekend. So Correct. yeah, no, so it's not a part. I would have known obviously, right? If it was gonna be on a Monday. So I think that just happened to work out with the ReaperCon last one. Re ReaperCon line, I guess, is what it was. I don't know. But, okay. But yeah, if you've ever wanted, like, some of the bigger metal stuff, 
or um, like the Monique Demar, Dem, Dem whatever. I have the 54 millimeter sculpt, and she's 50% off, and she's huge. So help help me clear my shelves, because I need I need to make a bunch of uh, room in my garage. So it would be greatly appreciated. So I've pretty much done. Uh, real science, you missed it. We were just talking about it and I showed off one of them. The image and list is gonna go out tonight so you can see everything that you need. All right, so that was 50-50. I'm gonna add a little bit of black to neutralize it. I want it to be kind of this weird pallid gray. We're gonna glaze this over the bones. Now, if you didn't zenithal or you can't zenithal at home, no big deal. No biggie, we're gonna wash and everything too, so just give it a nice even coat. I'm just trying to save us two minutes worth of time here. Even if the zenithal isn't functional, it still helps the miniature show up on camera, so. So we've got the hands. I didn't do any Xenophil on the gun since it's gonna be metallic. When I first painted this for like the show off image, I was I was trying, you know, I thought about doing non-metallic metal, but doing it's like cylinders, right? Which is what this whole thing would be, um, is a little bit trickier. And I knew that like, it's trickier in a sense that it's not uh, like an easily, um, there's no easy step by step. Like every time there's a cylinder do this, it's always dependent upon the size of the object, yada, yada, yada. So I knew that there was a chance that like, if I started doing it, that I could mess up, right? Like while I'm painting it and I wouldn't, I don't like doing anything that um, may run us over on time or anything like that. So thought about doing it, but we can, we can get really cool results. The metallics we have currently in this paint set are, are great, which again, next month is uh, something that we're playing around a lot with. At least on two of the sculpts, one of them is wearing like an all gold, well, I'll give a hint, right? It's an all gold uh, diving suit, <clears throat> like old school Bioshock looking diving suit. And then uh, obviously the undead whatever on his throne is wearing like the, the purple the purple copper armor so that looks really good too okay so i'm thinking we're gonna do purple pants so let's grab sticks purple here oh i forgot to mention too if you are buying uh any of the 50 percent off minis and you add a 3D printed anything, I am still at a high workload. Um, I'm overestimating on that production time. So right now it says 10 days. That was actually like for last week. Um, so it'll be less than 10 days to get it shipped out to you, but I'm not gonna ship your stuff twice, right? So you, you will have to wait for whatever else you get ordered to actually get made. But I know some people have been doing that. like. They, they bought like almost one of everything I had, right? And then they, like in terms of the Reaper stuff on sale, and then they bought like one printed thing and I'm like, ah, you're gonna have to wait for me to print that, sorry. It's too much of a, too much of a nonstop process. Like I, I literally was in the garage at 6 a.m. this morning, or really to be fair, like 6.10. Checking whatever I had done and I don't know, some of you got order notifications at like 7 a.m. So that should tell you, <laughs> that should tell you when I'm like getting up to actually work on the stuff. All right, so we've got purple pantalones. 
getting started here. Oh, I guess these are, I thought this was maybe a kneecap, but that is not kneecap. That other part is though, I believe. Yeah, Dragness, that was one of my favorite uh, Patreon videos. We painted him up doing non-metallic metal. It was great. I think that's actually one that ran really long, but the results were so good. It was, I think that one's like a three hour class. But yeah, that sculpt is super awesome. I know someone out there owns it because we, um, uh, I sold it, so. I forget who has it though. But somebody out there's got it. And I, I love the way it turned out. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna make a wash out of our leather color here. As usual, grabbing a tip. Pretty much th three to one ratio here, water to paint. Pretty much, I, I, may make, I might make it two to one just because this polished leather's pigment is like a joke with no, no punch line, it's pretty weak. I'm just gonna wash this over the bones. Now then, this month had uh, two metal minis. Next month is only gonna have one metal mini. But we also have, obviously, the larger mini on the throne, so that's the trade-off there. I have the, uh, I've got the entire box of all the miniatures, though, here as well. Maybe this month, like, uh, next week, I'll, I'll pull you guys to see, I'll give you some options for March to see what you guys want to work on. Alright, we're gonna let that dry. Now we're going to grab our runic purple. All right, so going over wherever that zenithal is showing through, right, for our first pass at a highlight here. focal length. I keep like having to move my hand funny. All right, there we go. More saturation here right around the, I say right around the knee. It's really not around the knee actually, but you get the idea. The most voluminous portion. Remember to drop your painted minis in the Discord if you can. If you have painted up any of them so far this month. I know a lot of people said they were excited about the orc that we did. So I'm wondering if anybody has that finished. Or the marrow, right? Really any of them. Next month, I... I there, there are a few I think people are going to really have fun with. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of black, a tiny bit, to our wash we used on the bones. I'm gonna add another brush full of water. And I'm just gonna run this uh, like a liner. 
on the ends of wherever the bones meet, uh, anything in between any recesses, everything like that. I'm not, I'm not really trying to tint the whole surface, but you can see what that did just then, right? Pretty easy. Still on the Gorilla. I really like that sculpt. That's a fun, fun mini. Anything Wild West I'm a fan of. Such an underserved genre in miniature gaming. I really want the guy that did, um, I forget his name, but the guy that did Song of Blade and Heroes, he has a Wild West version, but it's, um, it's only in Italian, so he hasn't translated it, and, like, anytime I ever see him post about anything, I'm like, yo, please, please translate the Italian version, bro, because I love all of his games, because they're so simple, but I get it. takes time and money to do that. Look at that. I love I love the color that we're getting in the bones right now. They're very like sickly. They're not necessarily bleached. Bleached bone. Hey, we can actually say bleached bone now that GW has gotten rid of all the, <laughs> their old copyright names. So let's add a little bit of white to our runic purple. I don't even remember what the freehand pattern looked like. I don't even know where that miniature is, you guys. I don't know what I did with that miniature. <laughs> uh... I'm looking where I have the other painted stuff. He's not over there. And he's not on this. He's not on my table, I don't think. There's the orc. We've got the orc, right? And there he is. And then we've got both marrows here. Yeah, I don't know what I did with our monkey, pal. Monkey. What are you, monkey? Yeah, no idea. How strange. I, I mean, you guys, you guys have been watching me enough, right? Like, you know that it's probably, it's, he's probably right in front of me behind something. That's, that's pretty much how this always goes. But yeah, no idea where any of those weren't where he went at all. Not sure. Is that an IT problem? Nomad, tell him to turn the water off and on again. All right, so we're going to, I'm adding a little bit more runic purple here. Let's, let's jump over here. Okay. I'm gonna add the highlight really on this top, like 60%. Because I definitely want the shadow start kind of wrapping itself around the, the curve on the, the puff there. Facebook won't stop showing me ads for like off-brand 3D printer accessories now and then like 3D printing Patreon people. It's like the only thing I see. And that's pretty rare, I see even a sponsored post, because most of the time my uh, like ad blocking stuff hides all of it. Highlighting up the side there. There you go, no Maddie. Yeah, I was about to say, I think you can just do exclamation point Discord 
Remember, you can also do exclamation point Josh's things to check out the Amazon shop page that I've got where I list everything that I use outside of like the paints and minis themselves from brushes to lights, wet palette materials, you name it. Jeff Bezos gives me the smallest payout possible if you make any purchases after following that link. Any purchases at all. So if you're about to spend 10 grand on Amazon Pure Business, by all means, please do that first because I will get like 60 bucks <laughs> off 10 grand. So I appreciate it, but that that all of that money literally goes into either like toys for the pets or um, just like household stuff. So literally goes to living expenses, etc. I'm gonna add a little bit more white. We're gonna do the same thing again, except this time I'm only going for the edge here. The edge of the rounded portion of his little, his little poofy pantalones. You can see that right there, nice and bright. Wow, I like lost my voice. Same thing right here. That looks pretty good to me. <laughs> yeah, it's a trap. They put an apostrophe in it. I agree. Highlighting the little, little cuff. Big cuff, little cuff. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm trying to figure out what this... There's a very strange noise happening outside. I can't figure out what it is. It sounds like a... I don't know. Like a construction vehicle. Big shout out to everybody on the Patreon. Oh, I need to update our patron count because we're actually at 82, I'm pretty sure. The shop cart section of the website is really nice. Thank you. I've, <laughs> I'm gonna cry. You guys have no idea how hard I've been working on this stuff, man. It is like, I just, I was totally unprepared for the overwhelming uh, amount of orders and support I was gonna get from all that. And so, you know, I had to redo the entire website I'm finally done with every order that came through. Now, they haven't all shipped, but they're all produced and getting packed from the old website. And then now I'm moving over to that one. Um, if you did just buy the 50% off Reaper minis and I'm not having to 3D print anything for you, all that's going in the mail this week, no question, like within a day. Um, so that stuff will ship out really, really soon. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really cool. So like you can make an account on the website. You can do a uh, wish list. Yeah, the um, the descriptions are pretty funny because anything I upload on there, like some of them I, I definitely uh, phoned it in for because I was like, I don't know what to put here. But I think my favorite descriptions are uh, either the Elder Brain. That one's kind of funny. Um, I'm trying to think what else, but I have, I have a lot of, um, gosh, I have so much stuff to upload. I'm adding uh, two more brand new vendors to the website for February and I'm dropping one vendor. So if you see any of the white werewolf uh, tavern stuff that you like, definitely grab it ASAP because uh, they're they're going bye-bye. And it isn't because I don't like their stuff. I really like it. They just don't um, release their stuff fast enough to make sense for me to pay them at the beginning of the month, if that makes sense. Archvillain next month, their theme is underwater. Signum Games is like, a weird spin on King arthur -y type stuff. So I'm excited to see that. They have a huge diorama with a witch coven coming out. Um, and then I just got r &E Studio and uh, Orc King. I don't know who keeps, who keeps calling me. Hold on, I need to figure this out. It may be a doctor. Hello? Hey, Gala. Yeah, sure.
trash. Why are you calling? Why are you calling Josh? Quit trolling, trash. Alrighty guys, sorry about that. Sorry, I'm just saying uh, what, I, what I may have missed here. Apparently Trash was the one who uh, called you. Oh, did, I muted my mic, right? Just the troll. Yeah, you did. Okay, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, no, that was actually uh, the lab results from one of my mini doctor visits, and it's not, um, they weren't bad, but it definitely, uh, you know, whatever. I had I had a scare, so they, a cancery type of scare. So I've been doing all kinds of fun things like that. And last week on Thursday, I found out that it's all good, but I have to um, get a chunk cut out of me. Luckily, not like the surgery I had, uh, you know, last year. This this time, or well, I guess December last year, but it's always something fun, guys. Anyway, if you want to help me pay my medical bills, please go by the cheap miniatures I have on sale on my website. <laughs> but, always fun. All right, so we can go ahead and start working on the bone. So I added some white to our darker bone wash color. Um, it's really not a problem in the uh, like consistency department, mostly because adding white is such a thick pigment anyway, that it will all be a-okay. So, we can go ahead and start that. I'm gonna start here at the knees. The knees, please. And I am doing, you know, brush strokes. To, I mean, you'll be able to see. It's pretty obvious, but I'm not doing uh, like complete coverage here on the highlight. I want to leave some nice texture there on the bone. I feel like um, 
as a as a skeletal pirate, you know, he's probably not taking the best care of his his <laughs> bones, I guess. I don't know. So that leg is pretty cool. Do skeletons get osteoporosis? And they pr uh, I mean, maybe, right? Maybe they only consume milk. Or maybe they bathe in milk, I don't know. A milk bath, like a milk steak. Actually, I'm trying to think. I think in, it was either the Philippines? No, Korea. They do uh, pork belly in milk, like a marinade before frying, which I thought was crazy. this back here a little bit more run this up to the knee bring it down looks pretty good uh, let me see you guys someone shared what their gorilla I'll take a look at it I'll take a look at it. we're doing really good on time this is this mini is like an hour paint job so you know as long as as long as we're not running over crazy, we'll be okay today. So I'll give it a look here in a second. Picking out the facial features here. We don't, we don't really have the same formula on a skeletal face, of course, as we normally do, which is uh, the sides of the eyes, the tear ducts, down the side of the nose, to the corners of the mouth, right? With, with uh, this guy, I'm just literally looking for the points that are protruding. But we're doing pretty good there, so let me see. All right. Where, where, where are we? So, Discord. Reap a Discord. Is it in the Miniature Monday section? Probably. Looks like it is. Oh, I like the hat. Let me see. This looks good. All right. Yeah, there's a, a show on Netflix that's like literally nothing but Korean, um, like, cuisine, I suppose. And they had a whole episode on pork belly and how pork belly is their number one import and export, which is very intriguing. I like the amount of blue you've got going on in the uh, fangers. I know that the, it, it does take a little bit more control in terms of the color shift that we did right on the fur. That can be a little bit difficult, but you're doing fine. I think it looks totally okay. Honestly, I would if you're worried about the extended arm and so like, it's gonna look just as fine, even if you don't do the like two color shift or whatever. So if that's if that's what's kind of messing with you, then don't worry about it, right? Just repaint it with like one color and rock out that way. It, it's not not too much of a problem. What brush size do you use? I only ever use a size one brush for anything I do. Um, and there's there's a a bit of of lore behind it, but. Uh, yeah, size one, specifically the brand that I use, uh, the Da Vinci Maestro Series 10, size one. That's all you need. I do own a couple size zeros, but uh, they're pretty great. They do exactly what I need all the time. 10 out of 10. I used to go through them way more than I do now, but uh, with proper brush care, etc., etc., you definitely 
can have a good time. Or you can buy bulk brushes. I do still recommend uh, this like cheap Chinese bulk brush pack. It's like 20 bucks or something for 50 of them. And that is on the Amazon shop if you're interested in that. And for those, uh, I think the size zero is closest to my size one. Um, but they have them in double zero, zero and one. Size one's pretty big. Um, so, looks more blue in the picture than yeah. I mean, really, it's up to you. I don't, I don't think it looks that bad at all. I think you're doing a good job. All right, so I'm gonna add more white. I'm gonna do a little bit more, there we go. Start here at the knee again. And a lot of the, the brush size stuff, for me, it's just consistency in the style that I paint in. Um, my, my brush control is at a point to where this size brush is totally fine um, for what I do. Uh, this series of brush and the way that it holds pigment and releases pigment is perfect for the way that I paint, which is very wet, very thin, right, in terms of pulling the paint off of a wet palette. Um, other people like other brushes for their particular style of painting. I know on the Patreon, I, I recently redid the brush control class where we go over a bunch of exercises you can do at home to get better at brush control. And I've already heard the, the chorus sing about how much it's helped them. Um, and that, that actually, so like what I decided to just go ahead and record was essentially the same thing that I do for people in person at conventions and things like that to really help you out. Um, but all of those different things, right, are it's kind of like once you once you get, you know, the, the tool doesn't produce the skill, if that makes sense. Having a good brush um, obviously uh, makes a difference in the way that your pigment comes out and how thin you can do things. But you can you can still lack brush control, right, and have a really nice brush and still not get good results, or at least consistent, uh, expectable, predictable results, which is kind of like the main problem that people end up running into um, until they start honing in on brush control, which you can practice certain things or you just get it over time. So <laughs> don't do it with a beer. Yeah, I know. That's hilarious, though. I remember the uh, second ReaperCon that I taught brush control at, somebody gave me a thank you note. They like they have like a thank you card and they wrote me a thank you note. And inside the note, <laughs> they filled it full of lines, which if you've, if you've taken my class before or if you're a part of the Patreon, you know exactly what that is. And I thought that was really funny. I almost cried too, man. I was like, you got me a thank you note? Actually, so when we did the Airbnb event, everybody, gave me a thank you card too. And funny enough, they actually threw extra cash inside of it because they said that I did not charge enough money uh, for the event, <laughs> which I definitely, I think I cried if I'm not mistaken. But my, my biggest problem in life is uh, definitely, I guess it's not a problem. It's a good, it's a good, personality trait to have, but you know, definitely giving as much as I can. It's worked, it's worked out well enough so far. All right, so going into the face here, I'm gonna be paying a little bit more attention. I can't wait until we can do another Airbnb event, but it's probably gonna be a while. Hopefully sometime this year. Those were so much fun. It's like the best vacation ever. So you can see, I really just picked out all of the details in the face. Little, little dotting, little, little highlighting.
All right, I'm happy with that. We're cool on them bones. All right, you guys want to see another miniature for uh, February? You guys ready for that? Oh, his little his little sword's bent, but you got a gold tooth, man. I think we're gonna have fun painting him up. I just love these miniatures. I think they look really cool. And I was trying to figure out like which one should we paint, right? But I figured the D20 makes the most sense out of all of them. I love all of the sculpts, obviously. I like the wizard, I think, uh, the most out of all of them, but definitely a fun time. I think um, highlighting like the edges, right, on the, the die itself, highlighting the letters separately, or not the letters, but the numbers, and then um, like pulling those highlights from a geometric object into this like organic shape is fun as well. And then the gold tooth, you just gotta, you gotta appreciate a good gold tooth, you know? Okay. Let's do, let's do the big blammer here. I'm gonna grab a uh, nut brown. Is this active? It's active, wow. Wowee. And I'm gonna grab some of the barb flesh. Yeah, that series is really cool trash. I like the uh, the really big ones that are in, I believe, Ed's office, if I'm not mistaken. But those are the ones that were like, uh, like Funko Pop size, real big. So I mixed the two to make them lighter. So that way when we wash uh, the gun down, it will be easily highlighted, I guess, is the concept here. That is the concept. All right. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the nut brown. In general, I'm gonna mix it with the leather, 50-50, and we're going to base coat the very small crate. What's in the box, guys? What's in the box? What's in the box? Good old, good old OG memes, you know? Back when memes were so simple. I guess they are pretty simple nowadays, though. So. That's just a, that's a classic, rare collectible meme, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Got the box, the shoes, we'll probably do like black. Crazy, I know. Let's use the same brown, I'm gonna add more of the leather actually. It's another brush tip of the leather. And let's do the strapolas here. My brush is kind of hating me right now. I just keep loading it full of paint, not washing it out all the way. It's all right, you'll survive, brush. I've put you through much worse than this. I've made you paint WizKids minis. <laughs> Where's my shots fire? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shutters. Bernie's mittens are in the box, dude. I would take them. I would take them. The lady already said she literally can't make. She's like, I can't do orders, people. I have. She's a teacher. She's got kids. It was just a fun thing for her on the side, and now the entire world's like, give us your mittens. Give us your mittens. 
Dude, it's like when I started, when I opened up my shop, right? I'm like, I didn't expect this to happen, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, the coat. I feel like the coat should be red. It just looks like it's red. So we're gonna grab Dragon Red. That's how I painted it the first time. I think we had blue pants, I don't remember. Bad experiences with WizKids models. It's okay. It's okay, hey. It's all right, you know? That's why we have Bones. That's why we have Bones Black. That's why we have Bones USA. Okay. Oh, now Justin, you probably don't have the answer to this, but since I can ask someone, so um, with the Bones USA stuff, are you guys in, so like, are you uh, third partying the mold creation? Are you also doing the, well, obviously you're, you're not making the molds in house, um, the, the die cast or like the injection molds, but are you in charge of like the actual, um, oh, you're making the actual huge die cast molds? Like in house? Because that's impressive, because I knew that you guys had to do that, like, with another company previously. But what I'm wondering is, are you in charge of the, uh, like, tooling on those molds? Because that was something that I was wondering, uh, like, with the Winter Wolf, right? The tooling of it literally had, like, the worst mold line directly down the middle of its forehead. <laughs> which I know you didn't have control over previously, right? Um, with the Chinese factory, so that's what I was wondering, was, like, maybe, uh better placement of some of those things um I, i'm pretty sure i have the answers the thing is, is i just don't know what we can and can't talk about in terms of uh well yeah because john said they're making you're making the molds there but we're like, making the molds here but they aren't to my knowledge they aren't die cast interesting yeah okay yeah they're they're not the big giant so they're not like traditional pounds no okay they're not steel correct like john's okay. out there but i would say uh, john i don't know what you know about what we're allowed to talk about but i would probably cut it off there in terms of like what we're talking about like, in terms <laughs> of the, the yeah because i know stuff behind it yeah because i i have an idea of kind of well that answer makes me kind of understand uh a little bit more but yeah that's that's what i was wondering right because i know that um uh, previously, there was no real say in terms of, like, how things get chopped up, right? Um, and it's just kind of like, Correct, yeah. they, you know, they make it, and then they get shipped to you, and if it's, like, a huge problem, then obviously that means another really expensive big mold, so... But that's cool. That's that's exactly what I was wondering, right? Because that gives you guys a little bit more power to, like, control placement of mold lines and, and things like that, which is really cool, so... Yeah, we... Yeah, I guess the short of it is we definitely have a lot more control. That's, that's awesome. That's good. She's good, Jim. Can you cast gummy material? You want a gummy Sir Four Scale? I mean, I would assume it's possible then, right? I mean, whatever they're using most likely is food safe <laughs> under extreme temperature, so. Well, you could make your own gummy mold though, Sir Four Scale, if you wanted. You can just buy the, the food safe silicon and, and do it yourself. And they, you know, that would be cool for the pizza dungeon to make desserts. That'd be pretty funny. I second this. Now the real question is, are you gonna be able to get that same company that made the, uh, I'll write it down. <laughs> um, yeah, cause like you could make that pretty easy, like, because especially with John, right? Like you could take the food safe silicone because it's not gonna, it won't hurt your uh, rubber molds. So for Sir Four Scale, that's easy because obviously it's a metal mop. So you could do that pretty simply like at your chair. Um, but the real question is, are you gonna be able to have the people that made the custom Reaper ice cream make ice cream for the pizza dungeon? That, now, obviously, I know that's, like, a special occasion because it's not cheap, but I feel like that would be so cool. To have gummy or four scales up at the, uh, the, the Reaper pizza dungeon? Yeah, I agree. That would be really cool. Reaper patch kids? Okay, Nomad. Okay. Actually, 
all, all jokes aside, if there were like, if you could have like a gummy, gummy D20 or like a hard candy D20 that you could eat when it's like, when it rolls a bad result or whatever, I feel like that would be pretty clutch. I do. Oh, I love the idea of a, of a hard candy, like D20. Jawbreaker. Functionally roll. Yeah. There's gotta be a candy company in Denton. There's gotta be, there's gotta be somebody like, um, out there making real hard candy. I feel like Denton's a big enough, small enough town, right? To like have a confectioner. The culinary department. Nasty flavors, critical fail. Okay, so now you're talking like Jelly Belly style. All right, so we're gonna grab Blade Steel. You know, it's funny. I feel like the whole idea behind uh, Ed, like for real, wanting to. <laughs> well, so the Pizza Dungeon, like, it's a funny idea, right? In general, it's funny. But it is functional because there's really nothing out there in, in that part of Denton. So, like, you, you will probably get business anyway outside of the fact it's the Pizza Dungeon, right? But I really feel like this whole thing is because he's like. Having to, having dealt with uh, Pizza Hut corporate, right? He's like, man, I can do this myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's like, we got the space, we got staff, we got people coming in, we can make pizza and theme it. It just makes sense. And it makes sense too. Like the uh... so there was a place called Gamewise in Plano, um, back where I used to play. Uh... It was weird. It was a land place, but they also had like war machine stuff and um, confrontation and other uh, tabletop war games because that's what the owner was into. And um, they had a pizza place that was like, what? It was in a strip center, and it was like one door down. And so the pizza place just cut a deal and like had super discounted pizza, and that's like what everybody ate when they were there, right? Because it was so convenient. And if you're gonna be somewhere for hours and hours, you can't survive off chips. You know what I mean? Like the 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 local game store struggle snacks <laughs> out of the vending machine. Like if you're at a tournament all day, eventually you're gonna feel just like sick from just eating a bag of chips and two Mountain Dews. So what is happening on my phone? Four o'clock alarm. A Tiger King style pizza place. Well, I'll pardon your joke, uh, but yeah, it's meat pizza. <laughs> oh, I messed up. See, I keep, I did this yesterday. And if you get, if you get a metallic, any of the metallic colors we're using um, for this season, so to speak, if you get any of them on your fingers, man, you gotta go wash your hands because it is, that metal flake turns into like pixie dust glitter and it'll get over all over everything. I'm washing my hand off here. But that's why the metals look so good, right? Oh, I, I even got the wrong metal out. Okay, so I got gold, but I wanted the dragon copper. We're doing dragon copper on the uh, big old scope arena. Succubus Sriracha. Wow. You know, if they were gonna give John his own flavor, it would be melt. It would be burned rubber, and Crocs would be on his pizza. And one beard hair per order. Justin's would be an empty Chicken Express container. <laughs> and Collins would probably be like. Uh, a scratched, like a, a piece of scrap paper with like a to-do list on it. And they just like put that on top of the pizza sauce. But it's a it's a to-do list that he actually needed. And so he's, <laughs> so it like messes with his day. Ron's pizza, Ron's pizza would just be something really stressful. And the name would like be extremely long, very specific, but would have like a backstory that would take him five minutes to explain. And that would probably be, probably be Ron's. Or, Ron's pizza would be whatever you wanted, 
but they would forget to actually start making the pizza. So you'd have to call twice. And then they're like, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm on it. <laughs> Dave's pizza would be really fast. It would be called like the horsepower pie and it would just be extremely smart or fast. And then Ed's would be like, it probably wouldn't taste good because it would be the most profitable pizza possible, right? So it would be like a minimal amount of sauce, a minimal, like it would be financed. It'd be a financed pizza. Pizza by, or, or, or if it's Ed's, they would apply the pizza sauce with a house brush, right? Like that would be also pretty on brand. I'm trying to think what else. Sadie's pizza, a trebuchet pizza. No, the trebuchet you could order, but it's made out of mozzarella sticks. Sadie's pizza would be, it would have to be something colorful, but like, it, I don't know, maybe it's like a, a mix between like a meat and veg and like, just like any topping you could do to just make it a, like a Supreme, right? I feel like it would be like that. And then maybe they hit like um, Proctor pizza. Yeah, it would just be a bunch of like dots and like pointillism for his. That's how they would uh, apply the sauce. But yeah, Sadie's would just be a bunch of color. I'm trying to think what else. If they did, um, I'm grabbing void blue, by the way, the dark blue for the hat. If they did one for, uh, oh my gosh, how am I, how am I forgetting the name? Oh my gosh, who, uh, the internet, lady and internet, lady that runs Reaper. Oh my God, how am I forgetting her name? Cindy, there you go. So the Cindy pie uh, would be like one of those letters um, from Harry Potter, the screamers. That's like, if you don't open it, it eventually catches on fire and then like screams really, really loud. <laughs> that That's what her pizza would be. If Anne had a pizza, if she was still there, uh, when you open the top of it, every ingredient would be swatched. So like the inside of the paint of the, the paint box would have a swatch for every ingredient so that you could like copy the paint at home. And it would have exact ratios, very specific ratios. Or her pizza would somehow be made by Audrey three, Audrey two. Let's do black for the shoes. I feel like that's pretty easy. I'm just gonna make a wash like consistency here out of our direct black. <laughs> the, if Adrian had a pizza, it'd be a margarita pizza. I'm trying to think if I'm leaving anybody else out though. I'm sure, I mean, obviously I am. There's a lot of people at the Reaper, but. All right, let's wash the Trebuchet special. We give you a random pizza, you have to catch it after they launch it. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna take nut brown, mix it in with the black here, a little bit of the leather as well. I'm gonna make a wash out of this and we're gonna run it all over the gun. I watered it down too much. The, the Weeby Pizza. The Weeby Pizza would have genitals. Because that's, <laughs> that's his thing. <laughs> to sculpt it all. Hey, let's actually, let's use this wash on the shirt too, sorry. I just realized that needs to be washed before we highlight it. do with the sheath. Maybe that'll just be painter's painter's choice. I'm always allowed to <laughs> I'm always allowed to claim that on one thing I feel like. And I'll go ahead and put this over the box too. A little wooden crate.
That's funny trash. The Bones 5 pizza delivered by boat. Right, let's do the hat too. We're just gonna use this all over wash. Pretty much everywhere we're... Everywhere we're... Everywhere we need some more Contrastio. That'll work. All right, we just need that to dry. We'll kick it into gear. You love your Da Vinci Series 10. Good, I'm glad. I'm glad. I try I try and preach preach the the good word of the Da Vinci Series 10. Oh my god. Why anyway, okay. All right. You know when you make a post somewhere and you you explain in the comments like, hey, this is this. And then someone asks you the question you've already explained. I love that so much. I don't answer it. I literally don't. <laughs> if I see that, I'm like, no, I need you to read the comments, man. Oh man, all these people with Da Vinci's coming in, sweet. And that's the thing, right? Like the 35 is cool. Cause uh, like, so Anne really likes the 35 or she may have changed, I don't know. You know, she changes her, her painting taste. Everybody does. But whenever we had kind of talked about it, she likes the 35 um, because of the length, which makes sense, right? Because it has more of a snap um, for the, the style of painting, like the way she mixes her paint and everything. I actually had 35s uh, previously, and they just didn't, like the length um, made it harder for me to taper the way that I do. And the 10 is like perfect for the way that I uh, use paint and water and all that good stuff. So. What's funny is like something like the the length of your brush of the bristle can can actually impact uh, you know your success in doing certain things and for me the shorter fatter fuller English round which is the technical term for the series 10 uh, works pretty great so What I'm doing now is I'm just going back with our, our lighter brown and just adding some some fake implied wood grain texture. Simple enough. Oh, she recommended you the 10. See, I knew, what, that's so funny. Maybe she's changed her mind. Cause yeah, the last time we talked, she liked the 35. But it's been a while. Do you like that? When's the last time you thought of that song? It's been a while. Sorry. Justin's like, dude, I listen to that song every day. Love it. You got the butt of the gun the butt. All right, cool. I'm going to take some of our leather color, mix it in with the same tone that I just used. I want it to be more yellow, more ochre-y. I'm going to use that to highlight up all of the, I'm assuming, gunpowder pouches he's got on the belt here. I mean, they're not, they're not bulletos. Off to class. Good luck, man. Good luck in class. You forgot they're doing a quiz today. You didn't study. Uh-oh. Wamp wamp. Wamp wamp. Man, I remember a few years uh, after I was out of college, I would wake up or like I would have a nightmare that I was enrolled in a class that I forgot I was enrolled in and it was like too late to drop the class. <laughs> That happened to me all the time too while I was in college. Like I would still have, I, I would like wake up 
thinking like, oh my God, did I have a class this whole time that like I've never been to, but I can't drop? I don't know why. I think I was just so scared of everything all the time. Like that's, that was my college experience. And being forgetful. Those, those two things combined. I'm gonna use the same color here on the edges of our crate. Little easy highlights. They're so easy. They're so easy. Okay. Now the tassels. I'm gonna use our leather. I'm gonna move over here. Mixed in with a little bit of white. So it's kind of like a golden color. I'm just gonna loosely add some color to them. We're gonna go brighter, so that's why I'm not super concerned with the coverage. I'm just doing vertical brush strokes, right? Following the actual tassels themselves. I'm gonna add some white to the blue. Now we do have a, a lighter blue in our color selection this this, uh, this semester. <laughs> we'll keep it with the class theme. But since we already have this on the palette, who cares, right? We can mix it ourselves. I'll just highlight up the edges. Those are indeed powder. I don't know, man. Maybe he's maybe he's a high seas drug dealer, and those those are his drug pouches. You never know, man. He is a pirate. Could be illicit goods. I'm just gonna highlight directly on the top. Bridge it down to the side. <laughs> that was your second guess? Yeah, I know. It's where he keeps his minis. I know some of you saw that post where there, there was a person on Facebook, they were like, what do, where do you guys keep all your miniatures since Bones 5 is on the way? Like, what do you, what's your storage solution? And I'm like, my toilet holds 76 Bones minis. <laughs> People are like, what? What do you mean? All right, got that highlighted up. Highlighted up. So we're gonna go into the red here. I'm gonna grab Heraldic Red. We don't need to mix this with anything. So like the pigment in red in general, unless it's like a Chimera color or something like that, is a, uh, I wouldn't say weak, but it's just not a super strong pigment. So uh, we don't really need to mix anything because we'll be able to layer the brighter red directly on top. We will experience that fun experience twice uh, next month, especially on the, well, one of the miniatures I haven't shown you, but then especially on the D20 um, because he's red. And yeah, like I said too, the photos will be available for you guys tonight. I just haven't taken them. And I'll show off uh, the two that I've already shown to you. I do, I wanna, you know, we can, can't show you everything. I want it to be a little bit of a surprise, but that's a, a quick surprise. stop vibrating my phone is just has such an attitude today I'm glad I picked up that I mean 
I'm glad I got the call about all of my lab results though because I didn't know who it was going to be. Well, we got raided. We got raided by by the coolest guy in town. He's my best friend. We call each other on Discord every night and we talk about what we had for breakfast, what we had for lunch, and what we had for dinner. And then we talk about all of our hopes and dreams. And he says, all right, buddy, I love you. Have a good night. And I say, I love you too, buddy. And then we both do that back and forth. And that's what we do every night, every night. Every night I do this with him. <laughs> Put a ring on it. All right, and then I'm gonna mix in some of our leather to the red, plus a little bit of white for a semi-highlight color here. Very simple. Wamp, wamp. All right, so we gotta figure out the sheath. I mean, I am gonna say uh, painter's choice, but I, I'll throw something on there before we call it a day. Oh, big old day. -o. All right, so in the interim here. Painter's choice doesn't mean you need to leave it unpainted. No, it, it does. It does mean that. If I, if I just want it to be Zenithal gray, all right. Look, I could just hold the miniature like this the whole time and we never paint the back. That's that's the secret you don't know. The reason the reason I only hold the mini like this when I show it to you is, is because I don't paint the back and I don't want you to see just it's painted, but I don't want you to see the back. And I realized that too. So like this, unless I show you, so like I, now the marrow I showed, right? When we were painting the other guy, but I realized like, I don't bring these uh, to the table all the time whenever we're painting them for miniature Monday. So I'm like, why am I doing the back of this thing? Right? But it's because I've, I've got to do the right thing. I know I just threw that. It's okay. It's a, it's a bones mini. That's the best part about bones minis. They don't get hurt. All right. Okay, it's a good thing. All right, so we got a, what, green, I guess? Fine, we'll do green. So I'm gonna grab the darker green here. We'll make it happen, Captain. What, what am I seeing here? Payment, who's buying things? Aaron, are you buying Bones Minis? Hey, he bought the 54 millimeter Mo Monique de Noir. The female barbarian Bonehenge priest, cool. Yeah, remember, if you are uh, buying any of the 50% off Reaper Minis, if you add anything that's 3D printed, you, you're gonna have to wait for me to actually produce the print. But otherwise, all your goodies will be headed to you uh, very, very soon. Oh, uh, very, very soon. All right, so, let me grab this. Yeah, so I'm trying to clear all of my extra storage and minis. I'm taking marketing to the top. Yeah, dude, I'm trying to clean my garage out. <laughs> and I didn't include, like I have, I have like 12 Mumlax. Like I have some big stuff that I'm holding on to just so I can maybe do classes with them. Um, Cause even though I do have uh, three Saturn printers, which can print huge stuff. Um, it's still, it's a mini painting studio thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'd rather not print stuff that big, so. But on my website, minipainting.studio, you can go see all the random things that I've got that I just need to get rid of. They're all brand new. They're all new in box. I just need to get rid of them and reorganize my garage, my 3D printing setup, all that good stuff. So you're doing me a favor. My loss is your gain, right? Isn't that what every, <laughs> isn't that what every scammer says? All right, I'm gonna grab some gold. 
I've let that sit too long, but it's all right. I'm gonna wash it down anyway. You know, here we'll do the t we'll do the tippy tip. But yeah, just go to minipainting.studio, click the store. You're good to go. Filter Reaper stuff. You're good to go. I got some. I mean, there's some cool stuff on there. That's pretty dang expensive, right? But typically, right? Like the Monique is big. And all of the minis are like some of my favorite, favorite, favorites. I just am never gonna be able to do anything really with them now that everything changes so rapidly. Okay. Do a little gray highlight on the Buterinos. His little shoes. I'm just doing a rough highlight so I can wash it down. Oh, maybe not, actually. It's so thin. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I haven't updated the uh, 3D production timeline. Right now it says it's a 10 day lead time. It's really not that long. Like, if you ordered something today, it would get in the mail like Monday, next Monday, right? But I don't want to, like, since I know people are going there to buy, like, my excess goodies, um, I, I don't want to happen what happened before where, like, I go to bed and then I wake up to, like, all these orders and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I wasn't ready in, in my Kevin Hart voice. This song, uh, I don't know if you ever watched Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency or Service or whatever, but this this song specifically that's playing right now sounds like the intro. Weirdly, it always reminds me of that intro. All right, so I'm gonna wash this down. That same dark tone that we used on the bone. Dark tone on the bone. That just sounds dirty. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit darker here. I need, I need even more. Even more. Boom. Cool. Well. Yeah, I know, right? What, by the time, like, I liked season one a lot. It made me very interested in everything else. And then burning through season two and realizing they've got, you know, they just canceled it. I was like, ah. But it's all good. But either way, I had fun painting him up today. That is it for the first, first week, first month of 2021 Miniature Monday. Here are a preview. Clover, we are sharing them later tonight. So just hold your horses for a couple more hours. I've got to get to the post office immediately. I'm probably, I don't know, I'm kind of screwed today. I, I literally have been working since 6 a.m. Like, and I there's just not enough time in the day. Um, but so here's one of the miniatures for February. You can see right here. Another one of the miniatures for February that we showed off are right here. Got some OSL, playing around a lot with the metallics, deep purple metallic on the copper, really, really fun. All kinds of good stuff happening. So that is it. I've got to run, take photos of these. Well, I have to add seashells and some gra grass tufts um, to some that you haven't seen. And then I'll get that photo up and out probably right after dinner time, CST. So like, I'm just trying not to die uh, by the end of the night tonight. <laughs> and then, uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that's going on. Um, we're starting the next uh, Patreon atelier thing. Um, if you missed it, we did a painting fur class on the Reaper Bones Black Winter Wolf. Uh, not really a winter wolf theme, just a big spooky, scary wolf theme. We did that this last weekend. That's the $10 Patreon tier. I think we're actually at 82 patrons. Either way, when we hit uh, 90 patrons, I will shave all the hair on my head, including my eyebrows. I'm kidding, that's not what we're gonna do. Um, we'll do some celebration as we make our way to 100 people on Patreon, keeping me fat, happy, and alive. So thanks so much for hanging out yet again. Definitely check out minipainting.studio for everything that we got going on. And uh, yeah, you'll see the February minis this evening. Um, I will share them out on my socials, share them to the Reaper group, send them over to everybody that needs them, from Reaper to do a repost, whatever. I know John always likes to do it too and uh, you, you'll be able to get your order in for all that good stuff. So thanks so much for hanging out, everybody that is here as usual. And uh, Justin, do you have any uh, awesome news for us? Any concerns, any alerts, any congratulations? What do you got for us? Uh, I don't have anything new, unfortunately, but 
tomorrow, of course, it's Clever Crow, as well as Anne in the morning. Uh, and if you're curious about the rest of the shows we do during the week, we do have a schedule that is posted on our offline, um, on our, on our offline screen. So, uh, but we appreciate you folks for hanging out with us today. Thank you, Moon and Dan, of course, for the raid and for hanging out with us there towards the end. Um, and as always, keep being awesome, guys. Awesome. Thanks so much. And it looks like we're raiding Giggling Geekette. We'll see you guys later. Adios.